Welcome everyone to Life Beyond Six Feet. I'm Damian with RKB Paranormal. This week I'm joined by Regina, Jesse, and Cassie of PPF Investigations. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Hi. So I'm just going to jump right in and ask how was this team formed? Uh, The team was originally formed by myself and my best friend who both had an interest in the paranormal. We worked together at the time. Um, We went on our first ghost hunt about 10 years ago. And when we came back, we were talking to coworkers about it. And Jesse just happened to work with us at that time and express that she had an interest in it as well. So on our next ghost hunt, she was invited and... Um, has been with us ever since. Cassie is a fairly new member. She's been on the team for a couple of years. Uh, we had reached out and, and wanted to add to the team. Uh, she had expressed interest in, in joining a team. So we met up and she's been with us ever since. Well, there you go. So how many total is on the team? Um, right now we have four. Four? Okay. And we're all female. Oh. Yep, I, I knew that, um, which I think is awesome. Um, do you ever have any guys go with you just in case, like if it's a real sketchy location, like a, in a sketchy part of town? We work with a lot of different teams. Uh, we believe in peri unity. So mm-hmm. there are times when other teams with, with males do come with us. So, yes. Okay. So when you went on that first paranormal investigation before you actually started your team, where was that at? Um, We went to the Stanley Hotel in in Estes, Colorado, where Stephen King wrote The Shining. Oh, wow. So you didn't mess around on your first one, huh? (laughs) (laughs) No, not at all. And actually, we went with um, the guys from Ghost Adventures. It was their very last public event. So we were able to investigate with um, Aaron and Zach and some of the crew. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So, Jessica, when did you have your first investigation with the team? um mine was back in i think it was 2012 they were going to go to uh old um old south pittsburgh hospital and they were just kind of looking for people that wanted to go with them and i'd always been interested in that so i went ahead and went with them and then i was just kind of hooked (laughs) there you go so what about you cassie what was your first investigation with the team um my first investigation uh would have been at an undisclosed location in nashville um, okay. due to privacy reasons i can't tell you where i got you uh, but it was it was very interesting um i had never worked with a team before i'd go turn it on my own but had never done it with other people so it was uh definitely interesting to see everybody working together and, and i absolutely loved it well, that's awesome so i know Regina, I know you've been involved a lot with Antoinette Hall. So how did you get involved with them? Um, one of my fellow paranormal friends actually found this location um, five years ago. They were actually doing a haunted house out of it. And he stopped in and said, asked them, you know, if it was haunted. And they said yes. And he asked if we could come in. And he invited me to come in on, on a very first investigation there. Um, after that, I was in contact with the um, board of directors that own the building and asked if we could continue to do ghost hunts out of there. So that lasts about five years. They do have it now up for sale and are not really doing the ghost hunts anymore, which kind of hurts my heart, mm. but I understand it. So right. we were lucky enough to spend five years there as the home team. Right. So now, like, was the whole team involved or was it just you or is just how did that work out? Um, it has been the whole team since we've we've started. Um, not all the team would would be able to attend the ghost hunts. A lot of times um, with the private investigations, uh, I would be the only one there kind of just holding down and, and, and there to answer questions. But whenever we would do our own events or we would allow other teams to host events there, the whole team would be there. OK. So what's some of the the things you guys experienced during your time in that building? Oh, my goodness. Um, I know Cassie and Jesse have stories of their own, but for me being there a lot by myself, I heard things, I saw things, um, knowing that nobody else was in the building. Um, I can clearly remember a time where I came in and I was setting up tables and chairs and I heard this hissing 
noise behind me and I was like afraid to turn around because <laughs> I was the only one in the building. Um, right. I've heard people walking around upstairs when again, I'm the only one there. Um, I've heard a male's voice behind me um, again say, hmm. So there, there was lots mm. and lots of things, but we experienced things as a team as well. Right. So Cassie, what was some of the stuff you've experienced there? Oh boy. Well, um, <clears throat> I would say the most significant would have to be, we were as a team, we were all in the uh, main portion of the upper house and we were trying to find out we had that there's a spirit there that nobody's been able to get the name of. And we were trying to get him to say, yes, that's me or no, it's not. And as we're, you know, saying different names of people who have been there before, we all heard a male's voice say something out loud, even though there was no men with us. And of course, later on, when we listen to the recording, it sounds like it says correct answer, but we all physically heard it out loud. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty wild. Um, Jessica, what would you say would be your most uh, wild story from that place? Um, we've, I've heard definitely a lot of um, footsteps and things like that. But I would say the most that we get is down in the basement. Um, when we do spirit box session, it's pretty heavy down there. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like someone or something is down there that doesn't want you to be. And a lot of the spirit box sessions will have a lot of growling, um, voices saying, get out. Um, pretty angry voices come through. Almost. Okay. Wow. That's uh now, when that happens, when you hear a, a get out, do you guys just go ahead and stop your session and just go ahead and exit the room, or do you do you continue? Um, a lot of times we'll continue. We just try to get an answer as to why. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we don't stay down there too long. I got gotcha. you. So, speaking of Antoinette Hall, I'm sure you probably know where this next question is going. How did Conjuring Kesha get involved, and in, in how, how was that, how did that get brought up? to be on that show um i have solicited a lot of different networks to try to get the quote unquote paranormal existing shows to come out there mm -hmm. um and those of you who are not familiar with Antoinette hall it needs a lot of work um it needs about 10 million dollars for restoration so it was my goal to try to get at least one of the paranormal shows to come out there and get it more publicized in the hopes of finding someone who would be able to donate enough money to get it restored. So upon doing that, um, I had had a producer from Discovery reach out to me and actually reach out to one of the board of directors first. And they said, you need to talk to Regina. So they reached out to me and I gave a, a description of all the spirits there and what has happened. Um, waited for about a week and a half and got another call back. They told me that they were, you know, doing you know, a new paranormal show with a celebrity host, did not tell me who it was. Um, about a week and a half later, they called me back and said that your location has been picked. And then they began to give details on how it was um, featuring the pop star Kesha. And it was based on her podcast called Kesha and the Creepies. Okay. So how did that experience go when once filming started and all that? Was it a good experience? Um, was it was it something different you've never really been through? How, how did that go for you guys? Um, for me, it was great. It was a very great experience. Kesha and the her celebrity guest, Betty, who were very, very pleasant, very easy to work with. Um, the crew was very easy to work with, gave great direction. So I had two days of filming where Jesse and Cassie only had uh, one day. But for me, it was great. What about you guys? How did, how did you guys enjoy working with her? I think it was really, it was really interesting. They were really sweet. Um, they were really interested in the history of the um, the hall and the, the history altogether of that area. Um, so I, I really enjoyed it. What about you, Cassie? I, I had a lot of fun. Um, it was different than what I was expecting, but it was definitely something on the bucket list. Right. Um, but I definitely enjoyed myself. Everyone was very nice. 
And um, I was actually very excited to see how excited Kesha and everybody that came with her were about the place. It made me very happy. That's good. That's good. And my wife and I have watched all, all the episodes and that was personally my favorite episode. Um, Cause I, I've been to Brushview mountain numerous times. So I kind of knew what to expect there. And, um, and I was just real intrigued when, when I seen it was announced, he was going to be at Antoinette and that was the one episode I felt like she didn't, she didn't come across as over dramatic. Um, I know sometimes when you're you're dealing with people that's on TV, they kind of over dramatize a little bit because more or less sometimes you're just told to do that. Um, and I didn't feel like in that episode she was that way. She was more down. She seemed more down to earth, more calm, and stuff like that. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I mean, I think not to be biased, just because we're in the episode, but I think that our episode has a really good story to tell, and they piece absolutely. It together. They pieced it together really, really well. Um, I was very happy with it. I've seen all six episodes um, as well. And I just have, a, I just feel that our episode, you know, told a better story than some of the others. Right, right. So this convention we got going coming up in a couple of months. Let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about that for a minute. Whose initial idea was it to get this con going and, and the idea behind the whole um, I've really lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> see, it, <laughs> what was the initial idea behind the uh, the calls for it? You know, donating to a senior dog center and, and stuff like that. What was? How did this all get going? How did the ball get ro rolling? Well, we as PPF Investigations have held a uh, paracon um, several years ago, actually at Antoinette Hall. It was small. Um, it's kind of hard to get people down there just because of where Pulaski is. It's a mm -hmm. small town, um, but we did host one there. Um, so it had always been a goal of ours to do that again, but we just wanted it on a bigger scale. So when we met Medics for Paranormal, we had briefly talked about doing it with them kind of um, in passing as they had do, they were doing an event at Antoinette Hall um, of their own. Mm -hmm. So after they got finished with that, I reached out and I was like, do you guys really want to do this? And they said, yeah, I think we do. So when we got together, we thought it would be a great way to not only showcase the paranormal, but to give back to the community. So um, Medics for Paranormal picked the senior dogs um, location or, or center to donate to as one of their members is very, very passionate about animals and, mm -hmm. and that's where they decided to donate. And then um, our passion is to restore and, and help historic locations. So uh, we've known Jack Brewer for a long time. He owns the old Raleigh Cemetery in Memphis. Um, it is all self-owned he um, relies on donations and does ghost hunts out of there to raise money to help him uh, preserve the uh, cemetery and it is the oldest cemetery in memphis so we decided that we would give our portion of the money to him to help his location <clears throat> and see i think that's that's awesome it's it's for two great causes not just one and for anybody listening this convention is going to be what is it october 22nd Yes. And it's in Lebanon, Tennessee at the Wilson County Fairgrounds. And of course, PPF is going to be there. Medics for Paranormal is going to be there. My team, RKB Paranormal is going to be there. Um, our past guest, Eric Freeman Sims, is going to be there. Just a lot of great guests. And um, Mid-10 Paranormal, I've had them on. They're going to be a part of it. So it's going to be a lot of great guests and and, and all kinds of fun. And it's our first convention, and we're super super excited about it. We're very excited to have you and everybody else out there. And it's a great chance for people who are interested in the paranormal that live locally to come out and actually talk to local paranormal teams. Um, a lot of the teams are over locations, so there may be a possibility to talk to them about booking um, an mm -hmm. investigation or, or if they have a public event, you know, to going on a public event. And then again, of course, raise money for two great causes. Right, right. Now... I want to talk about where I was at last night, the Hotel Metropolitan up in Paducah, Kentucky. How did you guys find out about this place? Um, I had been online researching different locations because we really 
I mean, we like some of the bigger locations. We like to go to some of the bigger, well-known locations. But of course, if we can always go to the smaller locations that are, have not been over-investigated, that's mm -hmm. our goal. Um, so I had to come across it several years ago. Um, they had had a team that had been in there a few times, and I'm sure some, you know, paranormal investigators here and there. So I called up Miss Betty, who is the sweetest woman in the whole world, um, and asked her if we could rent some rooms and do some ghost hunting. And she was very open and honest. And yeah, sure, come on. She'll tell you all her ghost stories. And mm -hmm. um, from there, we've we've been, I, I think it's been three times. Jesse's at, I, I, I know I went, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, you know, it's been twice for, I think you went with um, uh, Harold's yeah. team. Yeah, I went with another group prior to my team going. So, yeah. Yep. So what's um what's some of the activity you guys captured while you were there, whether it was captured on film or audio or just personal experiences? I'll let Jesse or Cassie go first because I've had other experiences besides what they right. experienced. Your experience is probably the coolest, <laughs> but um, for me. Um, a lot of orb activity and I have some on my, my Instagram. Uh, and I think we have some on our, our PPF page <clears throat> uh, showing some pretty interesting orb activity on our uh, video cameras and um, just feelings of, of not being alone and things like that. Cassie, what about you? I think the most interesting thing that happened for me there would be the room that I slept in for the night Nobody told me it was supposedly had the most activity. Um, but when I got up in the morning, the metal trash can in the room was laying all the way in the middle of the floor. So I couldn't even open the door without hitting it and it had been against the wall when I went to sleep. And since the door was closed over and locked, I don't think anybody else came into the room and moved it. So that kind of threw me off just a little bit. All right. And what room was that? What room number? You know what? I don't even remember anymore. I don't remember. <laughs> Hey, so what about you, Regina? Um, the first time that I had went there was with some other paranormal investigators. And um, as soon as we started putting our equipment out, it, it was going off. Um, but one particular incident that everybody else was outside and I was the only one in the building. And I was standing right at the beginning of the stairwell between you know that little area that's kind of a sitting area before you go up the stairs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I was standing there on my phone and I hear little footsteps running towards me and I knew I was the only one there running towards me and stop right on the side of me and I was like okay, got to go outside now. Uh, <laughs> because I was like, you know, when that happens as a paranormal investigator, of course you're intrigued, but when you know you're by yourself and your brain is telling you, yeah, that just really happened. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I don't want to be alone right now. <laughs> right. So, um, I've, I've heard that I've been in the, in the back room, um, on the first floor that the, where the bathroom has the shower. And uh -huh, I have uh -huh. in that room, I have, heard a male's voice mumbling um i sent you some videos of um orb activity uh -huh. and k2 activity going off um it's just to me i think because it's not over investigated that it's just a really relaxed time of environment for the spirits there and they and it was their home and mm -hmm. they just continue to live there right and saying that's that's kind of how we like to do things we kind of like to do these places that aren't as well known um you know we'll do places that that's that's more popular and stuff but you know that's why i like reaching out to people i know in the field of like hey is there any places you know of that may not be well known and that's what i did with you and you told me about this you know uh this hotel i was like I, i've never heard of this place and i'm constantly scouring the internet and facebook and, and and just looking for new places and i was like how have i not come across this place it's like an hour or two hours away from me right and uh and so you know you gave me miss betty's information i contacted her and she was like hey you know you guys come on up yada yada and so me and my wife went up there friday night just me and her i was like you know let's just let's take a night to ourselves just kind of get away for for a night just me and you right and, uh, and you know so we get there and i'm expecting somebody to stay stay the evening with us so at least just stay on the property and no no she, you're there by yourself she, like she, she just hands, she hands you the keys and you yeah, just like she was there. like 
she was like, "Here, here's the keys. Here's the the alarm code. I'm, you know, call me if you need me." I was like, uh, "I was like, what?" She's like, "Yeah, I'm going back home." I'm like, "Okay." And so, when she was kind of giving us a walk through the building, she was showing us the kitchen and the uh, that bathroom that's in the kitchen, that like the handicap bathroom. Yeah. She, like she was approaching that door, and it just opens up right in front of her. Mm-hmm. And she's like. She goes, see, she goes, I, I, I'm not normally in here at night. She goes, I, I don't like stuff like that. <laughs> and so she kind of closed it. And after she left, me and my wife tried to debunk it because, you know, we like to try to make right. sure, you know, it's not something natural. And so we're jumping around in front of this door and and stomping around. And, you know, it's not moving. I'm like, I was like, I was like that's, that's pretty weird. And we ended up when we ended up going to bed that night. Um. I'm a pretty heavy sleeper, so I so it has to be a, a significant sound to actually wake me up. And uh, yesterday morning, my wife's like, she's like, she said, "Did you hear all that stuff last night?" I was like, "I was like, I didn't hear nothing but the fan." I was like, you know, and she goes, she goes, there was numerous times it sounded like somebody's running up and down the hallway, and they would come to our door because we stayed in room nine, the the room that has the bathroom in it. Right. And uh, she goes, there was numerous times I hear somebody running up and down the hallway and it felt like they would stop at our door and just kind of look at us and then walk away because she kind of she's kind of a sensitive to some of this stuff and so she kind of senses some of this stuff and I was like I didn't feel none of it I was like all I felt was me sleeping (laughs) and so guys left the door open we started the night with the door closed because I'm a big person that I have to sleep with the door closed Um, I've always been like that and it started getting really hot in there yeah, and she's like, we she's like, we gotta open this door, and so I just, I put put something behind the door and opened it about halfway, and a few minutes later, she's like, we we gotta open it all the way. She goes, it's still too hot in here, and I'm like, I was like, all right, all right, we'll we'll, we'll leave it open, and uh, and then last night, one only one of our teammates was actually able to join us, but when we got started, it was it was kind of slow at first, and nothing was really happening, and. I was like, well, let's play some music. And mm-hmm. so I pulled out my phone and I played a BB King song. Mm-hmm. And we have our SLS out and we're pointing it um the room in between, I guess it's like the dining room and the kitchen, that room in the middle with the big wooden yeah. table. Yeah. We got it pointed in there, and you see this little short figure pop up and a and a taller one pop up. And me and me and Ted was on the other side of the room. My wife's like, she goes, it just mapped in two people. And so we walk over there and sure enough, it's a tall one and a short one. And it looks like they're kind of just moving to the music. Like the, the tall one, his foot's looks like his foot's tapping. And uh, we let the song play. And as soon as the song ends, they disappear. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right. And so we played another song, a more upbeat song. I think we played like a little Richard song. They pop back up. And the little kid looks like he was just jamming, just dancing along. And, and the bigger one still looked like his foot was just kind of tapping. And so that kind of started our night. And there was at one point, we were kind of taking a break. So we weren't filming or anything. We was getting some drinks and snacks. And Ted walked into that kitchen. And as soon as he walked into the kitchen, he heard that door open. And he turned around, and sure enough, it was open. It kind of spooked him, because last night was his first investigation with us. And oh, wow. so he was kind of, I think it kind of spooked him a little bit. And he ran, he kind of ran through. He's like, he's like, this door just just opened and, and stuff. I was like, I was like, All right, calm, calm down. I was like, well, let's, let's try to figure this out. And, you know, we tried to debunk it again and nothing. So we, I walked back out and it wasn't two minutes later, it opened again on it he had asked it to open the door the second time and like right on cue, like I was at this point, I'd started filming again. Cause like, man, if this door opens, I want to kind of be in the general area in case it happens again. And I'm in that, that middle room and I'm filming the room in front of us. And I hear, no, I'm, excuse me. I'm walking down the hall back towards the piano and I get right about where that little bathroom is. And I hear a clicking sound. And then I hear what sounds like a male voice, and I thought Ted was coming around because it sounded like it was in front of me. Mm-hmm. And I turn around, and he's back in the kitchen, and that's that's when he freaked out, is when he told it to open it the second time. 
And so I come running back. I was, he was like, and I heard the door when it opened. Like I heard the clicking when it, whenever it opened. And we stood in that kitchen last night after that happened for like 15 minutes, just trying, just hoping it would do it one more time. And, uh, you know, obviously it didn't, but for that to happen three different times and, and one of the times happened like right on cue, I thought was, was awesome. And then we finally decided, I was like, well, let's, let's take everything upstairs. Let's do some stuff upstairs. And, uh, we had set our rim pot up in the middle of the hallway. And like, as soon as we walked away, it just starts going, going crazy, doing stuff we've never seen it do before. And I was like, I was like, let me just reset it and make sure it's not malfunctioning or anything and reset it. And it's not doing anything. And then it starts doing it again. I was like, I was like, it's gotta be messing up. I was like, cause it's never done this before. I was like, maybe the battery's starting to die. So we changed the batteries in it and stuff. And, put the new battery in, set it back up and it starts doing the same thing. I was like, I was like, I hope this thing is like not messing up on us. We're going to have to buy a new one because what it was doing, I've never seen it. I mean, it was lighting all the different lights up and making these different noises. Like I've never heard it make. I was like, I, I was like, it's so weird. So we just kind of left it going. And a few minutes later, I moved it down kind of closer to the bathroom and it would start just making the random beep sound i think when it just beeps with no lights is like when the temperature changes right yeah so it yeah. started it started doing that and i was like i was like i was like i'm pretty sure that that's what that means and so it did that several times and we uh we started playing music again and it, it would it would go off during the music was playing and it was just it was it was a fun night and for it to be a place that that we had never heard of and and only only stories I knew about is what Regina had told me, so I didn't know really know what to expect, and it definitely didn't didn't disappoint. And we told Miss Betty when we left this morning that you know we'd like to come back, and she's like, "You guys are welcome back anytime." So it Jesse, was... remember Jesse? Remember the last time we were there when we were getting ready to leave, all the smoke detectors started going off. Right. Yeah. We yeah, got to take the batteries out of all of them because it just like they all just went off randomly. Yeah, like what is that? Like, there's no smoke, is there? Well, there's nothing wrong. But Miss Betty said, like, a couple days before, she had the same thing happen. They all just started going off. Yeah, she. I think she told us about that last or this morning. Yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty wild. Yeah, and she had changed the batteries from the first time it happened, so they weren't like bad batteries or anything. So it was really odd. Right. All right, so I know what your guys' team name stands for, and I don't know why I didn't ask this at the beginning, but what does your team stand, your name stand for, for those who may not know? The PPF stands for Pursuing Paranormal Facts, but there's a little bit of a backstory to it. Um, me and the other co-founder, Rhonda, were pinky pals forever, so we kind of based it on the name on that. So, you know, pinky pal forever is PPF, so then we use that those initials to create the name of our team oh well that's that's a, a different way to, to come up with the name i like that mm -hmm. so you've all been doing this at least for you know a few years now um some more th longer than others so to each one of you what is your your favorite location to investigate yeah i'll let them go first <laughs> <laughs> um I really there's, there's several that I really enjoyed and I would do again but my favorite is St. Albans it's a huge mental hospital um is it Illinois it's in Radford Virginia Virginia I never know where we are <laughs> it's terrible <laughs> um but of course we did it in, in the oh, it was so cold but it was it was very very interesting um, and we, we got quite a bit there, so. All right. All right. Cassie, what about you? I haven't been to nearly as many locations as they have. Um, I would say so far, my favorite is probably going to be Antoinette Hall, mostly because I've had the most experiences there. But before I came part of the team, I spent a lot of time at um, a cemetery in Clarksville, Tennessee, and I, I absolutely enjoyed going there. I had used to have so many pictures of stuff that I captured there. And the cemetery there itself 
it, you can just, you can tell that, you know, the people are still hanging out. I believe the location in there um, supposedly is haunted. Um, from what I understand, even though it's a cemetery, there used to be a mansion there. And they believe that, I guess, some of the previous slaves owned by the owner, they believe haunt the location besides the cemetery itself. So, oh, wow. so that's probably one of my favorite places to go. I, I can't tell you the name of the place because I... <laughs> It's been a hot minute since I've been there, but yeah, it's it's in Clarksville, and I love going there. All right. And now, Regina, what about you? Well, one of my favorite locations, I mean, I, I love St. Albans. Um, it is actually a great location if no one's ever been there. Uh, mental hospitals and prisons are always my favorite just because of the energy that they produce. And um, actually, I had something take over my body at St. Oh. Albans. So that was one of my most scariest experience. But one of my favorite places is in Nashville, and it is um, Mount Olivet Cemetery. And if you have never been, it is one of the most beautiful cemeteries that we have ever come across. Because whenever we go on vacation, we always hit up a cemetery. <laughs> that sounds weird, but not to us paranormal investigators. Right. But um, we have gotten a lot of activity out of Mount Olivet Cemetery. And if you have never been, I would encourage you to go. Oh, definitely. Um, the, we we kind of cut our teeth, me and Josh, and, and a couple of our friends in, in a in a cemetery in Dixon. So we're 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 kind of big into that. We hadn't officially investigated one since we started the team, but it's 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 on the to do list. And, and I remember that was one of the places you told me about when I reached out to you. So, and and, and now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna back up a little bit because because now I want to know about the St. Albans experience that you were just talking about. <laughs> So well, what, I, what exactly I had, happened there? I had been there several times, um, but the last time that I was there, I was with my uh, co-founder, Rhonda, and another friend who is a paranormal investigator, and we were invited to, to attend um, a ghost hunt there that, that the home team was hosting. And we went into this room that set up like a classroom. Um, the two of them sat behind me at the little desks that were in there and um, they were doing a spirit box session and I went up to the chalkboard that was in there and I was just doodling and drawing and not thinking anything, anything of it and um, all of a sudden it sounded like they were way far away from me like I was in a tunnel I could hear them but they were far away from me and they said that I had was at the chalkboard and I was you know doodling and had just stopped and was standing there and this went on for nine minutes and 38 seconds. And I only know that because my recorder was playing. Um, they were doing their thing. And all of a sudden they're like, Regina. And I wasn't answering. And they're like, Regina, Regina. And they said, I turned around and my face didn't look like my face. And I didn't really respond. So they grabbed up all their equipment. And um, the next thing I remember was being outside and they were walking me around. So I don't recall how I got from the second floor school classroom to the outside. So the only thing I can think of is that something was trying to take over my body. That's that. That's, it that's was a wild the first story. And only it was the first and only time that that has ever happened to me in almost eleven years of ghost hunting. See, I I, I don't know what I would do in that case. I, I've it. I've experienced someone's emotions mm -hmm. like they were kind of like channeling through me like i've went i went from super angry and like pissed off to like literally crying in tears in a matter of like 30 seconds right no idea why i never experienced that before and i experienced that at brushy mountain and uh I, I don't know what i would do if i just kind of zoned out for 10 minutes like that i don't i don't know how it's, i would react to it it's almost like a slip in time because you've lost time and you don't know what has happened right um i i did continue the investigation but i did not go back up into that room right and so have you been in that room have you been back there since that happened i have not been back there not. since. but i would if i do go back i will face my fear and go back in there no oh, there you go right. so so I'm sure you've been to all these different amazing locations. And it sounds like you travel qu quite a bit to go to some of these locations. Um, so what is each one of your guys' like top place that you, you want to go to before you stop doing this? Well, for me, I experienced one of those places this year. We um, 
Jesse and I, and uh, Cassie, if she's able to, but Jesse and I um, have always tried to take at least one or two big investigative trips a year. Mm -hmm. And earlier this year, we got um, to investigate the Washu Club in um, yeah. Virginia, City, Nevada. Yeah. Um, so I always try to like pick a location that's on the paranormal bucket list. Mm -hmm. So I know Jesse has always wanted to go to Bobby Mackey's, Jesse. Play the one that I, I do want to go to. Yeah. And I have been very hesitant to go there um, just because of the things and, and uh, spirits that are there. But mm -hmm. I have agreed at some point we, <laughs> we will get there. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know about Cassie where her you know, quote unquote, dream location would be. What about you, Cassie? Well, <clears throat> I think for me, uh, one of the places I really want to go, and I don't, I don't even know if you're allowed because I know they used to not let people there, but I've always wanted to go ghost hunting at Stonehenge. <laughs> that would be um, interesting. Uh, there's so much history and spiritual energy there from things that have happened in the past, a lot of things that they still don't understand. So I can only imagine the kind of activity there. Um, I lived in Germany for three years and got to do a lot of castle hopping. And so honestly, I would just like to take a trip to Europe and, and hit a whole bunch of the castles. And I think that would be, that would be like bucket list times a million. <laughs> oh, Absolutely. And uh, just overseas alone, you know, they've been around a whole lot longer than, than we have over here in the U.S. So they have a whole lot more history, a whole lot more death and tragedy. So that right, that anywhere over there, it has got to be hopping with activity. And uh, in the Washu Club, Regina, I, me and Lee's become pretty good friends. Lee from Medics for Paranormal and uh, when he told me you guys were going out there, I was like, man, I was like, I'm super jealous. I was like, you have to let me know how it goes. And uh, he said it was an amazing time. So, yep. it, it was an amazing experience, um, not only for us, but to share it with them as well. We we did have, um, not super active, but we did have some activity that, mm -hmm. of course, always makes it worthwhile. Because we all know as paranormal investigators, if we go into some of these locations, we can spend hours and hours and get mm -hmm. absolutely nothing. So, yep. It's always a thrill to be able to have something happen. Even if it's just one, like a good five second clip during that whole eight hours, you're like, you know what, that, that was worth it. You know, it was worth the time and effort. It's it's worth going through the evidence. So, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Um, for me personally, my, my, my dream location has always been Trans-Allegheny. Um, you know, it's just so huge and there's just so, so much history there. And, um, I don't think you could probably spend an entire week there and not even scratch the surface of that place. Jesse and I actually investigated there. Was it the year before last, Jesse? Oh, wow. Two years ago? Two, actually, yeah. That's about probably about two years ago. Yeah. And it, it, it was amazing. We we did experience some stuff there. Um, they kind of just let you roam around by yourself and we heard uh, we were going to go into this one area and we both verbally heard a hissing sound. We're like, oh. nope, not going down there. <laughs> so, oh, um, but yeah, that building, if you ever get a chance to go, it is amazing. And it is huge. And there is a vibration there that's like no other. The, the, that building is alive. It is alive with spirits. Well, I hope to make it there one day. We um since we started this team a couple of years ago, we haven't traveled too much out of like Tennessee and Kentucky. Um, so next year we're going to at least, at least try to hit up one place like farther away. Um, so I think we're going to try to start doing that at least once a year, hit a place that's more than just a couple hours away. Um, so we have our location for next year picked out. That's going to be about six, seven hours away. So we, uh, we're pretty hyped about that. And it's funny that you missing mentioned Bobby Mackey's. That's, that's one in, one of mine and Josh's big places we want to go. And, and my wife, she's like, you can go. She goes, I'm staying home during that one. And she's like, if you go, she goes, you can't come back home until, you know, you've been blessed and, and saged and all this other stuff. She goes, I don't want none of that stuff in my house. So, right, so right. that'll be, that, that's one of the ones that's, that's on our list, but it's kind of, 
kind of down the list because um you know she doesn't she doesn't want all that stuff here at the house i'm i'm I, i'm still trying to convince her to go i don't, I don't think she's going to have any of it so um but my fingers are crossed maybe, maybe she'll 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 surprise me so what what's the purpose of you guys doing this everybody has their reasons behind it what is your guys reason to be paranormal investigators Again, I'll let them answer first. <laughs> I don't want to dominate the conversation. <laughs> so, um, well, for me, I I'm just looking for I'm looking for proof. Um, I'm the skeptic of the group, so I'm like the one that is always trying to look for like let me debunk this, let me see if there's any other uh, reason for this. But there are things that have happened that definitely can't explain. But I'm still waiting on. I want like that definite proof from me. That's what I keep looking for. Right, right. Cassie, yourself? Um, <clears throat> for me, ever since I was really small, I've always seen things and heard things and I couldn't explain it. Um, it took me a long time to understand that I was, you know, sensing things that most people don't sense. And I guess it just sort of was like the mystery of it and realizing that there was something there that did want to communicate with me, you know, that most people can't communicate with. And I guess for me, it's, it's trying to get answers, you know, why are you here? You know, what's, what's happening? You know, how are you feeling? And I guess that's the biggest reason why I do it because I feel like an emotional connection there that, you know, if I can actually feel and understand what they are then you know maybe I, I can get answers for people who need them there you go so regina what about you well i i i think the the obvious answer for us as paranormal investigators is is you know why are they here are they stuck you know do they want to communicate mm -hmm. um but again each of us has our own experience that has led us down this path to be able to do this right uh, my per my personal story uh, does involve family members and I've always been sensitive to things even as a child. Um, so my goal is to allow people to not think that they're crazy because they're having stuff happen in their house or they've experienced things, but to let them know that not everything they see on TV and in Hollywood, um, the spirit world is not all made up evil demons walking this mm -hmm. earth. There is a very emotional and loving side to it. And if I can bring that to somebody, um, of course I want to, because that's the side that we walk on. We're not gonna, we're not gonna allow, you know, anything malicious to hurt us or harm us when we do this. Um, so again, if I can bring comfort to somebody, if I can bring them on an investigation and let them see what happens, let them hold the equipment and let them know that, you know, our heads are not spinning around in the dark while we do this. Mm -hmm. we're, I mean, we've been called everything from witches to whatever. Yeah. Um, that's not what this is about. This is about communication with the other side that we know exists. And and how do we break down those barriers and those walls and the things that people think about it um, to be able to communicate with our loved ones on the other side? There you go. And my answer is kind of a, a mixture of all, of all that, you know, um, and when somebody asks me, I, I simply tell them I do it because I love it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there, there's a ton of questions that nobody can answer, and that's what we're trying to figure out. And and like I tell people, if they're not in it for those kind of reasons that you guys just named, they shouldn't be doing this. Um, so for, for the reasons alone that you said, Regina, <clears throat> like you want to show people and, and all this other stuff and – um. Say you were approached by a network saying, hey, we want you guys to, to – we're, we're giving you guys the opportunity to have your own show. What are your guys' thoughts about that? Would you ever consider something like that, or you're just like, no, that's, that's not for me? What, what's your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts are if I was approached, then um, there have to be some stipulations. First and foremost, I'm not going to fake any evidence. Mm -hmm. Number two, I do want to show a different side of the paranormal, that there's different ways of to, to communicate and different um, equipment and things that we can use mm -hmm. to, to showcase that. So I'm not opposed to that at all. Um, I just think that the paranormal is kind of gotten, this shows have kind of gotten stale and there needs to be a new spin on things. Mm -hmm. uh, 
to bring a new life mm -hmm. into it, to attract people who may have a curiosity, but are a little bit scared to come forward. So um, I'm 100% open to that. What about you other two ladies? I'm definitely all for it. But like Regina said, I don't approve of faking evidence. If you want people to have a respect for the paranormal and a, a genuine understanding, then the evidence can't be faked. Like they need to see for, see for what it truly is mm -hmm. and not what's made up. Because if that's the case, then they can just go watch a horror movie and right. get the same effect as opposed to what ghost hunting is really all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, it 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 has to be. I would love to see a show that's just honest about what investigating is. I mean, it's not all, you know, they don't just jump out of work involved. It's it's time consuming. It's mm -hmm. it costs a lot of money. It's not, you know, something that's um, free to do. So you have to have a passion for it, and mm -hmm. we can show the passion that we have for it. I think it would be pretty interesting. Right. And like you said, uh, there would have to be some definite stipulations involved. And if they, if they can't meet those requirements, then I'm going to go ahead and, and turn you down. And my name's not going to be on that contract. So, um, and, and like you said, the shows are pretty much all gotten pretty much the same. I mean, there's a couple that, that like my wife and I really enjoyed. And there's others that we watch just because we just have a, a passion for it. And we, um, want to learn some, you know, sometimes they'll throw out uh, something we've never seen before. They're like, hey, we'll, we'll, we're going to try that and, or we'll see a, a place we've never heard of. I'm like, well, I'm going to look into this place and see, you know, so we watch all these shows for different reasons, but there's only a couple that we like really, really enjoy. Um, I wish the shows would showcase how much locations cost, how much equipment mm -hmm. costs, how much absolutely. time you spend sitting in the dark doing absolutely nothing. Right. And I realize that probably wouldn't be make for great TV, but a lot of people don't realize that these shows are filmed like over four, five, seven days to get mm -hmm. one or two little EVPs. Right. And you know, we have all invested in thousands of dollars worth of equipment mm -hmm. and spend thousands of dollars traveling, renting, you know, bringing money into these cities that we're staying in. Mm -hmm. I wish that side was showcased because it's not a cheap ho hobby. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of people don't realize we have to pay for locations. Mm -hmm. They think that we just get to go for free or they pay us. And that's not right. the case at all, as we all know. Oh no. <laughs> and and when you come across a really good deal, um it, it's hard not to jump on it, you know. I've 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 contacted some places that I've I've really wanted to go to, but they don't really advertise it very much. They'll you have to contact them to get prices and stuff. And then when I find out the prices, I'm like, that's like that's a little outrageous considering the amount of time you get. Right. Like exactly. I, I want it to be worth the price of a mission. If I'm paying six, seven, eight hundred dollars, I want to be in there more than four hours. Right. So, right. and then, <clears throat> whew, I lost my train of thought again. I forgot where I was going with that. Uh, uh, no, the location, the locations are expensive, and that's the thing. It, it's it's almost a deterrent for smaller teams to not be able to go there, and they, mm -hmm. you know. But what they don't understand is that we don't want to go with 30 people. Right. But, you know, a three people team or four person team can't really afford a $1,500 location. Oh, no. And, and see, that, that's what that's one thing I kind of like or that I kind of like I really like about the paranormal community is is so many people is willing to work with each other. If you have a small team of three or four and I'm like, hey. Let's contact this team, see if they want to join up with us and, and, and everybody split the cost of stuff. So like I know Lee said, you know, he's told me numerous times that they, they want to team up with us to hit up a location. And I know Eric said he's wanted to, to, to team up. So I'm, I'm glad there's so many people that's willing to work with other teams and not just be all about their self. Right. Um, I know there's a, there's some teams out there that are like that. I've I've interviewed a team that they said a lot of the teams that they first come in contact with were they were just all about their self, didn't want to share information with them about anything, mm -hmm. because because uh, there's no point in that. So, and that's another thing that that I think is great about you guys is is you're all about helping each other and and giving back to the the community as a whole, not just 
the community is, itself, but the paranormal community. So, mm-hmm. and if all teams were like you guys, I, I think that would be great. And there would be a whole lot more. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't really know the word I'm looking for. I know it in my head, but I just can't think of it. But it, it would be a lot better if all teams looked at things like you guys did. Um, mm-hmm. And so far, I've been fortunate enough to come across nothing but good teams like that and good people in the community. And so I want to thank you guys for doing stuff like that and, and not being all about yourselves. Um, like I said, there, there's too many stingy people out there. And those kind of people are doing this. They're, they're in this for the wrong kind of reasons. Um, you know, they're in it for clicks and likes and all this other stuff where, you know, that that's that's good and all. That means people seeing your evidence, but if that's the only reason you're doing this, then chances are you're probably, like you said, you're probably faking something. So, and and we've recently tried to incorporate the, what people would consider the boring stuff into some of our YouTube videos because, you know, it's not all always popping off left and right like these shows portray and uh and when you get that one good piece it whether it's a you know a really good evp or you capture something being knocked off the shelf you know that that's that's worth it in the end right and so we we tried to incorporate some of that you know what really goes on during an investigation where most people just think oh it's 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 non-stop where as you guys know it's not so so other than the convention, what do you guys have, have lined up for the future? Um, we are just trying to get to the end of the convention. Setting up a <laughs> convention was a lot more work than we, uh, well, we knew it was going to be hard, but it's a lot more work than we anticipated. So we really tried not to plan a lot to do this year um, until that's over with. And then once that's over with, we're coming into the holiday season and we don't mm-hmm. usually do a lot then either. So right. Uh, we're just trying to get to the finish line of the convention. Hey, anyway, it's 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 closer than it was yesterday. So, oh, yes, uh, and for like sure. I said, <laughs> and, and and I've started seeing the post of, of the shirts and stuff you guys are going to have. Uh, uh, that's pretty cool too. So, yeah. so then if, if nothing really planned for the rest of this year, is there anything on the docket for next year you guys are, are talking about? Um, we're looking into some locations. We're not sure yet. Um, of course, like I said, we try to at least do one big location a year, if not two, if we can get to it. But um, Jesse and I are planning a, a big vacation for next year. We're going to go to Alaska. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> so we're just going to have to see what else we can finagle after we get finished paying for that. Right. Now, if the, the convention's a huge success, did y'all would y'all consider doing it again next year? Uh, I think we would consider doing it again. Um, we've we had a lot of um, response and outpouring for vendors, which we were very fortunate. But we tried to make sure that we didn't duplicate any any vendors except for the paranormal teams, mm-hmm. um, just to give everybody a fair chance and not have rows and rows of of uh, crystals and rows and rows of right. you know whatever. So. Um, if if we're able to do it again next year, we'd like to do it on a bigger scale, of mm-hmm. course, to bring in more vendors, to raise more money. Right. Um, so it's definitely a possibility. That, that's awesome. And and you know, I, I I've tried helping recruiting some some people to 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 join in too. So yes, um, we appreciate that. Oh yeah, like like I said, it's all it's all about like you said that pair of unity, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I try to help out people any way I can, whether it's or promoting something or giving them advice or saying, Hey, check this place out or Hey, check out this new piece of equipment. So, and so that's, that's what it's all about. So, so if people want to look you guys up online, where can they find you guys? Um, we have social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, it's all under PPF investigations. We also have a website which you can um, view our evidence and our um, EVPs and videos on um, that. There is a link to that on our Facebook page. So it is PPF, like Peter Peter Frank, which is pursuing paranormal facts. Um, you can find us on any of the social media. All right. Well, ladies, I really, really appreciate you guys coming on the show. Um, I've been looking forward to it. Like I said, since this convention's coming up, I, I wanted to get you guys on before the convention to, to kind of 
help promote it and plug it a little bit. So I was hoping I could get you guys lined up and, and in before. Uh, I hope I can get Lee, Lee and Paula on before, but uh, I think I have maybe one open Saturday before the convention's in. So I don't know if I'm going to get them on before the convention or not. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping I can, but if not, you know, it's at least I got half half the team on. So, <laughs> um, well, we appreciate you you posting it and helping us, and and we look forward to seeing you there. And we hope to have a really great turnout and and be able to give both of these causes a big donation. That, that, that's that's all we can hope for. Um, I know I've been telling a lot of my friends and family about it just by like over text and stuff. It's like, hey, you guys should come check this out. You know. My team's going to be there, and then all these other great teams are going to be there. So hopefully um, I, I can get some people out. I, I, and actually what's really cool, um, I recently did a podcast about, about a month, month and a half ago, and uh, they, they said that they, they are trying to, to come up because they live in North Carolina. They're like, we're going to try to come out to that convention you know, next month. Right. So so that's I thought that was pretty cool, and they told me that the other day. So. All right, guys, I want to thank Regina, Jessica, and Cassie of PPF Investigations. Go look these ladies up, follow all their social media sites, check out their evidence, and come out to the convention in October. It's called Phantom Paws and Historic Calls. It's going to be out in Lebanon, Tennessee at the Wilson County Fairgrounds. It's going to be a great time, and it's all for two, not just one, but two great causes. So, ladies, thank you again for coming on. Thank, Thank you so much. much. All, right, we'll, all right. We'll talk to everybody next week. Bye-bye.